Now we go to the heart of the uh, shortwave radio, simple shortwave, superheterodyne radio, uh, four frequencies between 2 and 10 megahertz. Um, at first I want to show this regarding the audio amplifier. Um, every audio amplifier is usable, but a limited audio frequency range makes speech and music better intelligible. And that can be done by changing the output cap to the audio amplifier to a low value. So here I use 10 nanofarad. And that makes that with this radio speech will be better uh, audible. When you make this coupling capacitor higher, say 470 nanofarad or 0.47 microfarad, that's the same, uh, the receiving results could be um, somewhat sloppy and then I mean that also the low frequencies are transported very good into the audio amplifier. Um, but that can give some problems. So that's why I advise here a 10 nanofarad capacitor. When you want to hear music, raise the value from that capacitor to, for instance, uh, 0.47 microfarad. Then the music will be uh, will have a much fuller, richer sound. This is all in my book. Of course, uh, take some time that you can read it. Now I want to go to the heart of the uh, superheterodyne radio, and that is the VFO, the variable frequency oscillator. Here you see I've made only a kind of schematic idea about that uh, VFO. But important to tell is that in the VFO, when you want to receive radio stations uh, on single sideband, or you want to receive normal radio stations and tune in much better, you need a capacitor, a coarse capacitor, and a fine tuning capacitor. The coarse capacitor is 500 picofarad. The fine tuning capacitor can be 30 picofarad or 50. I did not use that here in this uh, VFO. I only use the coarse uh, tuning capacitor. But in my other radios, I have used a fine tuning capacitor. And when you want to receive Single sideband radio stations, the fine tuning capacitor is absolutely necessary. You cannot receive an amateur radio station without a fine tuning capacitor. To the VFO, um, I did some experiments with VFOs, a lot of, and you will find in my book uh, approximately three different types of oscillators, variable frequency oscillators. This is Dutch, by the way, and this is the translation into English from that Dutch text. And this was a quite uh, good working Oscillator. I have to say, I published on my YouTube channel many oscillators. All the oscillators that I published, as far as they are in the 2 MHz up to 10 MHz range, are usable in this shortwave receiver. But here, this is the VFO with this coil. And this proved to be uh, quite a good oscillator. I use a BD140 because a smaller transistors burned out for a very peculiar reason. This is also important. 
uh, it only oscillates when the phase from the primary uh, coil and the secondary coil is properly connected. So when it doesn't oscillate, reverse one of the connections. All these connections are arbitrary, in fact. But um, that doesn't uh, have to do so much with, with the issue. When you, you, when you want to make the whole circuit to oscillate, the phase must be correct and uh, reverse one of the connections from the coil. Here you see the waveform from this oscillator. These oscillators must be made in a stable way. So what I show here with this floating coil is in fact not so very good. I have to mount that coil uh, properly on the wood in a fixed way because every change in uh, the wiring or the dimensions from the coil give a small change in the frequency. But this was only a demo circuit and it works properly, etc. You see the BD140 that I've used. So uh, this is a usable oscillator for this shortwave radio. It can work between 5.7 and 12.1 megahertz. So this switch, switch one, you can open and close it and then you have an other frequency band. And of course the way the coil was made, two wires of uh, telephone wire were wound together on the form, the plastic uh, tube, PVC tube, and after that they were connected in the proper way and glued again with PVC glue to make it very dry and stable. Of course you can also use other frequencies. The IF amplifier in this radio is more or less universal and I found that it worked between 2 and 10 megahertz for sure. Approximately uh, perhaps you can uh, go to 12 megahertz. I don't know that exactly. I haven't tested it. And perhaps the lowest frequency that you can use with this IF transformer, uh, this IF amplifier I mean, is 1.5 megahertz. I don't think the, the whole circuit will uh, work on lower frequencies, though I have to say that I did not test it. On lower frequencies we have the problems, kind of problems, with this coil that has to have a very high inductance to get into the low frequency band. Uh, and also the VFO must oscillate 455 kilohertz higher than that very low frequency. So I did not test it, but okay, the whole circuit is usable for experiments for uh, receiving AM radio signals on all kinds of frequencies. So you can experiment with the circuit. It's a good uh, experimental circuit with good properties and um, I think you can uh, expect success on somewhat lower frequencies, 1.5 MHz, or somewhat higher frequencies, say 12 MHz. In all cases the antenna coil must be tuned to 12 MHz and the VFO has to oscillate on 455 kHz higher than 12 MHz.